Um, Mustard Seed Faith on the uh, session three on faith. And uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 17. And we're kicking off at verse 14. Matthew 17, verse 14, it says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. All right, so there's a couple more verses that, that I could have added on there, but I want to I stop there and focus on the mustard seed faith this morning, because um, <clears throat> let's pray, though. Let's pray as we, as we uh, open this up. God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, this morning, God, that you fire up our faith this morning. Jesus, God, enlarge our believing. God, that we can believe for more. We can believe for bigger. We can believe for greater. God, enlarge the amount of faith that God we had this morning. Jesus, God, that we can see all that you've called us to see. God, that we can attain everything that you've called us to attain. God, that we can believe all your promises, God, today. God, Lord, enlarge us. Enlarge our faith. Jesus, increase our faith. God, that we can see everything that you want us to see. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. So, what Jesus says here can come across as a little bit confusing because on the one hand, he says to the disciples that they couldn't cast out this, this uh, demon because of unbelief. But on the other hand, he says that they only need mustard seed faith. I did look into this a few years ago when I, I preached on a similar message a few years ago. That some of the some of the translations say as a mustard seed, and I would think the most precise translations actually say as a mustard seed. I think some of the translations say as small as a mustard seed. But I'm thinking that uh, maybe the correct translation is as a mustard seed, rather than as a small as a mustard seed. The reason I say this, we're going to get into that right now. But let's have a look at the mustard seed faith. Because a mustard seed has its own unique particular DNA. Although it might be small, it is also enduring. All right? So it can endure drought. It can bust through concrete as it becomes a seedling and start to break through anything. You know, um, it, it can grow through a whole lot of stuff. It can it, it even get knifed by lovers. You know, they uh, carve a love heart in a tree and put their names in the trunk, you know. You know, a uh, mustard seed can even tough that out. And, and uh, you know, someone might drive an accent into a mustard tree. Guess what the mustard tree does? It doesn't care. It'll grow around it and encase that thing and it will keep growing. You know, plenty of sawmills have started cutting up timber and found metal in, in the trunks of timber because, you know, they will put, put in there or put on, I put, you know, put in, you know, uh, one of the forks, put something, hang it over, and then they find it in the sawmill as they go and cut it. And it just grows around 
whatever it has to do with. You might see some barbed wire, you know, like wrapped around the trunk, and as it grows, it just explodes and pushes the barbed wire out. It doesn't matter to the mustard seed. It has a destiny, right? So the mustard seed has this DNA that says, throw at me what you want, but I am becoming a big tree. <laughs> throw at me, try and stop me if you want, but I have a destiny. I have a purpose. And so God has empowered the inside of the mustard seed. He gave the mustard seed a destiny. He gave the mustard seed a purpose. He gave the mustard seed a cause. He gave the mustard seed a vision. And God gave every mustard seed a resolution to become a huge tree to bear fruit off. One amazing thing when you think about, about the small, the tiny little mustard seed, what it can become and, and what it's destined to become. And I think it's awesome that Jesus uses uh, the mustard seed to illustrate our faith. Uh, and that our faith, and maybe, 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 uh, you know, the translation that says, well, this, this one that I'm using, it says, as a mustard seed, I think that is more correct because uh, it's as a mustard seed. If we got faith like a mustard seed, well, then we can cast mountains into the sea. We can uh, tackle and handle anything that comes along our way, right? So God gave every mustard seed a resolution to become a huge tree to bear fruit. So, mustard seed faith, although small, is big in destiny. Although small in size, is big in purpose. Although small uh, in size, is big in vision. Am I too loud out there? The next thing I see here is that the mustard seeds, mustard seeds are hot. Especially what is called the black mustard seed. There's different kinds of mustards, mustard trees. There's this particular black mustard seed and it's like chilli hot, you know. And I think it's interesting that Jesus uses a mustard seed for the faith analogy because mustard seeds are hot. God created the mustard seed with heat. And so the mustard seed is, is hot. It's not cold. It's not lukewarm. But rather, it's hot. It's fiery. It's feisty. It's got some kick to it. It's got some punch in it. There's something about the mustard seed. The fire that's within it within its DNA, says something to us about what kind of faith that we should have. Maybe our faith should have some fire in it. Maybe our faith should be feisty, <laughs> with some clout, with some energy in it, behind it. Our faith, I believe, needs to be red hot. I think I might still be too loud, am I? Yes. Still too loud? Yep. It's not just a regular seed like others, but it's been upgraded with some heat. And when Jesus talks about casting mountains into the sea and uh, casting out demons and these things, yeah, sure, he said prayer and fasting, but... But uh, he's talking about the faith, he said, because of your unbelief. And, uh, and so we've got to understand that the faith that God wants us to have or carry has got to have some fire in it. It's not just a regular seed, the mustard seed, but it's upgraded with some heat. And there's a parallel here, just like the DNA of the mustard seed has got fire in it. Mustard seed faith is faith with fire in it. So mustard seed faith is not just, uh, it's not a faith that is dead, 
It's not a faith that is lifeless. It's not a faith that is disinterested or washed out or faded or weary. That's fiery. It's a faith that is vibrant. It's alive. It's a faith that is spirited. It's got cloud. It's got destiny. It's got power attached to it. That's the kind of faith that God's calling us to have. Not a weak, not a weak faith. You know, it's not a vine. You know, it's a tree. It becomes a tree where birds and kids can swing off the thing, off that mustard tree. Birds can hang out on there. You know, the tree can bring shade, brings fruit. But it's fiery, it's vibrant, it's alive, it's spirited, it's passionate with purpose. Let me uh, just challenge you this morning. Are you passionate with purpose? Is your faith weary? Maybe your faith is even non-existent, you know. Maybe your faith has, has a heart, heart beaten and, and, a, and a knock to where you, you've laid your faith down. Maybe today is the day where you resurrect your faith again and get closer to God like Michaela's going to do. You get closer to Him so that, so that the fire of God begins to attach itself to your life. It's the fire of God that's got to happen. It's got to come on the inside of our life. Jesus no doubt had mustard seed faith. Jesus only had to be present to cause demons to shriek and manifest. He only had to be there. That was the kind of faith that he had. And he's talking about mustard seed faith. You know, we're talking, we're talking a serious kind of faith here. Uh, because we're talking about a faith that, that has overcome doubt and unbelief. And so has your faith lost its heat? Has your faith lost its fire? If it has, you've got to get closer to God. You've got to get closer to the fire. If your faith is struggling, get closer to the fire this morning. If your faith is weak, get closer to the fire. If your faith is weary, get closer to the fire. Because the fire of God is a consuming fire. And it consumes doubt and unbelief. And anything that's not of God. Yeah. And when you come up against a demon with a, a with faith filled with fire, it's a bad day for that demon. He's in trouble. When you've got mustard seed faith that's hot and enduring. Alright, so, so God wants to ramp up your faith with heat. And you know, there's no other way with God, I've found. Lord, do I really have to believe you? Yeah, well, the end of the day, yes. <laughs> the end of the day, there's no other answer. We've just got to believe God. We just have to believe we can do things in our own strength and, and God expects us to, to do what we can do in the natural. But you know, concerning our walk with Him, our faith has got to be enduring. Our faith has got to, got to have some heat in it. So, and the second thing here is mustard seed faith is faith with endurance. Mustard seed faith is faith with endurance. PV's thoughts here. Jesus implies that it wasn't the disciples, it wasn't that the disciples couldn't cast out the demons, it was because they gave up before it happened. You know, the only way that they can say, oh, with, you know, the disciples tried and they couldn't cast him out, the only way that he can say that is, is because they gave up at some point. Right? Obviously, unbelief caused them to give up. It was because they gave up before it happened. Right? So Jesus is saying to them, if you really had the faith of a mustard seed, which is enduring, you wouldn't have given up. 
Jesus is saying this. You had a go, it didn't work, you know, with your time limit or schedule you had, and so you ended the deliverance session. You gave up. So here we see that a mustard seed faith, although it might be a small faith, it is also a long faith. Mustard seed faith has a long timeline. You've probably seen the photos and the things, you know, where, and you're probably even, like, maybe even in your backyard, where you see roots start to grow through concrete. Or pavers, they just start to buckle them up. They, they don't care. They don't care what's in the way. Mustard seed faith is long faith. It's enduring faith. It's faith that outlasts any trial or any saga, any problem that happens in your life. Mustard seed faith is long faith. We look at, um, you know, Peter gets out of the boat, remember that? And, uh, and they see Jesus walking and Peter says, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. And, uh, and he starts, and Jesus said, yeah, it's me, come. So he gets out and he starts walking and then, uh, and then what does he do? He starts looking at the waves, under the, the storm, the waves are like that. And he loses his focus, he gets his eyes off Jesus and starts looking at the waves. And, and then he starts to sink, right? He starts to sink. Why does he sink? Because his faith is not long faith. His faith was short faith, it was short lived. And a lot of Christians, you know, we start off good, we start off in faith. But then when a, a trial comes and the waves come, the storm, they, we start to get buffeted and we start looking at the storm and start focusing on the storm and we start sinking because maybe <laughs> our faith is short faith. It's short-lived, but not mustard seed. Mustard seed faith. It's long faith. It'll break through the concrete. It'll push through the trials. It'll tough out the storms. It'll handle the problems as they come its way. It's got long faith. Mustn't see faith has a long timeline. And so the DNA of the mustn't see faith is more about enduring faith. Where mustn't see faith is enduring faith, it's Long faith. Mustard seeds are like if, if it's a drought, I'm go, growing through it. If it's a storm, I'm growing through it. If it's a barrier, I'm growing through it. Alright, so Jesus is saying to us, hey, you need mustard seed faith that has long term energy, long term prospects, long term endurance. It's long faith. It's enduring faith. So the challenge for us this morning is, are you on the verge of giving up on what you've been believing for? Because if you give up, it's not mustard seed faith. It's a short-lived faith. See, Jesus is looking for mustard seed faith. In other words, long faith. Enduring faith. And this is something that we need to continually um, decide upon day upon day. That yes, Lord, I'm believing you. Yes, God, my faith, I want this mustard seed faith that is always enduring. Yeah. You see, at the end of the day when we stand before God, He's not going to say, oh, how long did you believe for? Is He? Let me think, let me write this down. Now, how, how many years did you believe me for? Is God going to say that? No, no, no. He's, he's going to be, are you believing now? Do you believe now? When we stand before him, it won't be when, what, when, when, what time were we believing? It'll be, are you believing now? That's, that's what's going to, that's what he's going to say to us. That's what, he, well, he'll already know. That's what will be really important to you and I. When I stand before him, it would be, am I believing right now? Because 
Because it's only through faith that we get to heaven. Right? Maybe you've already given up this morning. Does your future look too tough to go on? Because mustard seed faith endures. And your future has the favour of God on it. <clears throat> but you do need to activate your enduring faith within you again, if that's the case. So enduring faith, long faith, uh, faith with longevity. So how do we build this? We'll get close to the fire. Number one, decide on a favoured future. You're a son or you're a daughter. It's only two. You're a son or you're a daughter. You're not both or half and half, nothing. You're a son or you're a daughter. And uh, that means, and if you're in the kingdom, that means... <laughs> You're favoured. If you're a Christian, God's on your side. You actually possess God's favour over your life. God wants to bless your future. And it's all for your good. I can guarantee it. The second thing, you need to acknowledge that God wants to give you what you ask for. Now that might sound hard to believe for some of us. Acknowledge that God wants to give you what you ask for, as long as you're not asking for sin, right? In Matthew 7, 9, 11, it says this, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give you the stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give you the snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So we're looking at a good God. An amazing God. Definitely a God with boundaries. <clears throat> He's placed boundaries over our life. But He's a good God. And we can often fall into the trap of thinking that uh, having to wait means being denied. But let's read that last line again. It says, How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? How much more does God want to give you good gifts? So, and so it's worth having mustard seed faith. It's worth having long faith because sometimes you've got to hang out and sometimes you've got to keep believing for a long time before things can begin to manifest themselves. See, sometimes the things that we're believing for can play, play catch up. The third thing, acknowledge God as your Father, Father in heaven. Jesus talks about God as the Father because he wants your image of your God to be as your Father too. And you know, uh, apart from only a couple of Psalms, you know, in the Old Testament, like David brought out a, a couple of areas where he actually called God Father God or Father of the Fathers. There's not a lot mentioned in the Old Testament about God being our Father. Only a few things, really, when you look at it. But Jesus comes and, uh, and, and, and ignites and explodes this, this fact that God is our Father. He's saying something to us. He's always, when he was uh, with the disciples, he's calling God Father. Right? And so he's, he's uh, expanding, you know, that, that God is he's wanting us to understand that he's our Father. Good Father, right? He's our good father. So, so it's very important that we learn to know God as our father. You know, it's, it's hard to believe God for good things if you can't believe that you're a good son or, well, not a good, but you're not, not worthy, but, but you've been collected, you've been ushered into the kingdom. He has chosen you and pulled you into himself. And when you know him as your father, it becomes easy to believe that he wants you blessed. You see how that works? But if you, if you just think, oh yeah, but you know, God could not like me, God could not hate me, God could not see me as a son or a daughter. If that's the way you think, it would be very hard for you to have mustard seed faith. That's why you've got to get close to him 
and know and have a few encounters, if you can, with him, so that his fire can touch you, so that you understand that he's his father, because that empowers you to believe for the good things. All right? Like some people can't even, they, they're like, well, I don't know if God wants me to have. You know, I remember when uh, John Mellor used to come, I remember talking to one guy up the back, and I said, oh, you've come from very cool. And he goes, oh, maybe. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Maybe, he said. Well, if God wants me to have a miracle, uh, you know, I guess I'll have one. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I didn't say much, because there's a whole heap of people here, but I'm thinking, mate, you're probably not going to get a miracle. I didn't say that to him. But that was just his understanding. He's like, if God wants to heal me, see, he, he didn't realise that, that by his stripes he was already healed. God wants him, wanted him healed or not. See, and we've got to know that, that God wants good things for us. So that when you ask, you can ask expecting to receive good things. Yeah. So you want to be accepting a favoured future over your life. Accept that. Know that God wants you healed, blessed, made whole, full of joy, full of peace. Wholeness is for you. Turn your neighbour and say, wholeness is for you. Acknowledging these things about God is not just saying them. It's learning them. And then it's knowing them. See, I can read the fact that God loves me. Or I can experience the fact that God loves me. And I'm going to get close to Him so that I know that He loves me. And we need to know that He loves us. We need to know that uh, he wants joy for us. We need to know that he has peace for us. And it's in knowing this stuff, we get close to him and we realise it's for us as we get touched by him. So, uh, applying a enduring faith on the small things is the last thing here. Applying enduring faith on the small things. In, in patience is about doing what needs to be left. And patience is about not doing what needs to be left. The difference between willpower and won't power. We need increased willpower and increased won't power. pretty good with the willpower. Not so good with the word power. Drive past KFC. Uh, was that sign there says, what, two dollars for a... Can turn around and go back there and it'll lose money on that deal. <laughs> I'm not good with... Not too good with word power, right? And I think that's the, that's the case with a lot of us. It's, it's a tougher gig to wait for things that God has up in the future for us. As we apply patience on the small things, we grow our patience for the bigger things. Set goals that you already have the capacity to wait for now. And then increase the length and the size of your goals. Last, I thought I had a last one. Don't jump the gun on your problems. Although you don't want to miss your opportunity, yet you don't want to take the wrong opportunity either. Right? So jumping the gun on your promise is like picking a green mango. It's not ready to be picked. It'll leave a bad taste in your mouth. Not only that, but once you, it's been picked, you can't glue it back on the tree. Some things are meant to be waited for. And that's why we need mustn't see faith, because we can endure the waiting season that's required for the fruit. James 1, 
2 to 4 it says, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Sometimes you need to let the promise mature before you pick it off the tree. Right? Align your heart for what you're believing for. Because even if you're waiting for a breakthrough, there are things that you can do to, to assist the breakthrough. Right? The goals you set, the things you do, assist your life towards the promises that are ahead. <coughs> Guys, if you're believing for a wife, there are ways you can speed up the process. Have a shower. Brush your teeth. So there are things that we can do. We usher the promises towards us as we're waiting. Alright? Look at the teenager who wants to buy a car. He saves his allowance. He wants to do extra work around the house, which is a miracle. <laughs> Takes the wheelie bin out without asking. What, what will he do? Oh no, they've already taken it out. Why? He wants extra money. Tries to keep the change. Taking driving lessons. It gets him closer to his car. See, he's doing everything he can to prepare himself for the car. He's aligning himself for that big day when he gets that set of keys. Amen. Mustard seed faith. So this morning, what if I get uh, Carl here just as we wrap up? Keys. Mustard seed faith. What do you think? How's your faith this morning? Have you stopped believing for the promises that God has already given you? Have you stopped short of your promise land and given up? Have you stopped short of the destiny, the things that you've been believing for? Have you given up on those? Come on, don't give up on the dream. Don't give up on, on the things that God has spoken to you about that are coming. It's better that you stay in faith. It's better that your faith endures. It's better that your faith has fire attached to it better that your faith is fiery because that stirs God up. Faith gets his hand moving. Faith gets his, his hand engineering things, you know, working for your favour. If you believe him, that's what he's looking for. Faith is his love language. He's wanting you to believe him because he's wanting to open his hand and bring things your way. Don't think God doesn't want to bless you. Of course he does. He loves you. He died for you. You're in the kingdom now. You're a son. You're a daughter. He wants to fill you. He wants to bless you. He wants to, he wants to bring all things around your life. I just want to open the front up here. If you were to, you know, Maybe you've given up on some, some things. 